Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you a Death Cleric build guide for in Baldur's Gate 3. Now the Death Cleric is not in Baldur's Gate, but we can make somewhat of a version of it. Now it's not going to be exactly like it is in D&D, but I think that this can be a very interesting class, so I want to come forward with this build guide. So, I've been working on this for a little while now, and the Cleric of choice for us is actually going to be the War Domain. As this allows us to give a bit of extra damage when we're doing our melee attacks, you're going to see how this build comes together and becomes the actual death cleric so it is quite interesting but uh first things first what we're going to go with is our cantrips of choice guidance is just a really great one to have sacred flame doesn't really fit the build very well but we're still going to use that as it's a early game option for defense or for offense i guess Produce Flame can be a nice one too that we can take just to give ourselves something to create fire uh we can also throw that fire on turn one but light can also be somewhat useful from the war domain we get ourselves divine favor and shield of faith for our deity there's a lot that makes sense for this um i like talos there tiamat makes sense too but uh this is entirely up to you and how you want to role play this but uh even like there's there's some that work really well i'm gonna go with talos just because i like that one but uh for our ability point score this is where it gets kind of interesting wisdom being the main stat of the cleric very important here as this is going to be a main stat of another thing we're going to add to it as well. So we're going to take our strength. We'll, we'll drop our charisma as well. We want to have our constitution high enough to give us a bit of extra health for survivability. Dexterity somewhere around there. We're going to dump our intelligence. And that plus one we can take out of strength. And we can put that plus. We can add our constitution up to 16. Or we can take our dexterity up to 16. Something like that. We can go with heavy armor or we can go with medium armor. It's really your choice. There's a lot of really great medium armors in the game. So don't feel like you have to focus around heavy armor. We can go with something a lot lighter than that. And something like that for our skill proficiencies as well. This is more so role play choice. But the Death Cleric. Now this is where we can go a couple different ways. Now I thought about adding Paladin. Going maybe two levels of Paladin for the Smites. But I do think that the best way to make the Death Cleric is to add in the Druid. And we're going to choose the Circle of Spores when the time comes, but what br the Druid brings is it gives it more of a Necromancer vibe, which is what the Death Cleric's about. We're going to use Chalet. This makes our Staffer Club becomes magical, deals 4 to set 11 bludgeoning damage, use your spell casting ability for attack rolls. Since the Druid also uses Wisdom, this is perfect. And then Thorn Whip can be nice, pulls a creature 3 meters closer, can you be used to take things off of gaps if there's certain areas, especially in Act 1, there's a few places where you can use this to get easy eliminations. For our prepared spells, we're going to go with something along the lines of Create Water being a very effective thing to use here, uh, we want to have that. Healing Word is a bonus action that can bring up our allies, I always recommend having at least that on if, you're if you have a class that can take it, because... The ability to bring up your allies without going up to them and using a bonus, or without using an action and instead using a bonus action, that is huge. Thunder Wave can be useful. Long Strider can be cast at camp and it lasts until long rest, so it's very useful. I'm impartial to Ice Knife. Alongside Create Water, this can actually be quite strong, so I like that one. And then for your last one, you can go, like, Fairy Fire is pretty decent. Uh, attack rolls against them will have advantage. This is a concentration. Can be somewhat useful early on in the game. I'm also a fan of Fog Cloud. I think Fog Cloud's really nice. And Thunder Wave, this will give pushback. But I'm going to go with Fog Cloud because Blinding and Heavily Obscure can be very useful. Especially early on. So that's what we're going to go with for the Druid. And then as we get into the next level of Druid, we get to choose our subclass, which is going to be the Circle of Spores. This is what makes it a true Death or a death Cleric. So we do get a Wild Shape, and you can use that to become a Spider if you want, or Wolf. Just for the role-playing purposes, but I prefer to not uh, use a wild shape. We get Halo Spores and Symbiotic Entity. So, this is the main focus of the Spore Druid, is to add this to the mix. Um, this gives us additional necrotic damage when you when you have the temporary health points. So, really nice. And we can ask cast Halo Spores with double of damage. And Halo Spores uses a reaction, which is nice. We also get Bone Chill, which fits the Death Cleric very well. So... That is quite nice. For our prepared spells, Enhanced Sleep can be good, but um, yeah, something along the lines of, we'll take Entangles, okay, Concentration to use early on. Speak with Animals always has a lot of use, and Charm Person too, but Long Strider is quite nice, get, fits the Cleric's ability to like buff up the team. And then Enhanced Sleep can be nice on someone, but uh, 
especially like a monk or a barbarian to give them a little bit extra movement speed but yeah fairy fire is also a really nice one just to give an advantage on attack rolls so we'll go with that i really like that we do get that bone chill cantrip there because that becomes more of the death cleric death knight style build for our next level spell we can take off fairy fire and go hold person this is another concentration that can be really great for just setting up the rest of your team we also get Moonbeam, which can be nice, but it doesn't fully fit the Death Cleric vibe. We get Flame Blade, which conjures a Flame Scimitar, deals 3 to 18 fire damage. She has a bright light and 3 meter radius and dim in 6 meters. Flaming Spear is actually quite a good uh, concentration, because this is going to spread out aggro a bit, which can be very useful early on, too, as the more, the more targets that you have the better for the action economy in Baldur's Gate 3. Spike Growth is just great, though, for the difficulty of movement. But at this level, Druid, we do get quite a few spells. We get Blindness and Detect Thoughts, so that's nice just to have as a always prepared spell. So we'll go with that for the Druid. And then as we get into level 4, we get another Cantrip and a Feed. So Poison Spray or Resistance. Resistance kind of a better one to go with. Poison Damage isn't amazing, I'll just be honest with that. For Extra Prepared Spell, you can go with Dark Vision if you want to have... Uh, this gives you the ability to see in the dark up to 12 meters until Long Rest. Pretty nice to have. Heat Metal can be a pretty good shutting down enemies. I always recommend having Heat Metal if you don't have someone else in your party that has it. Moonbeam can be decent. 2d10 though gives the ability to make it really low in damage. Only 2 damage if you don't roll great damage. Um, so keep long, bring back Long Shredder or use Heat Metal. Whatever you find that you're using a bit more. For our ability improvement, we're going to take our wisdom up. Now, this, I don't like leaving it at odd numbers. I usually get a lot of comments getting upset about that. We're going to assume we got the hags here to take that to 18, and then we'll take this up to 20. Uh, that's, if this is on a party member, we can attribute the stats a little bit differently so that everything's even, but we're going to assume this is for your tab or dirge, so they're likely going to have that. Now, we get our wild strike, um... But we're not going to be using our wild form very often, so not a huge use. What's nice about wild form, though, is we can pop that whenever we're in danger. So if you need a little extra health, it can help out a lot. Level 3 spells. This is where our build gets a little bit more interesting. And then also level 5, we get cre Animate Undead, which creates a servant from a corpse. And then we get a further increase to that later on you also get gaseous form which can be useful to get into small cracks and crease little places that you normally can't get to but enemy dead this is where this becomes a real death cleric now i'm aware the cleric does get create dead as what well, create undead or animate undead as well but the druid gets spore druid gets a better version of it so we want to have call lightning because we have create water and that's where this gets pretty intense because create water plus call lightning can deal upwards of 60 damage and then you continue to cast Call Lightning without expending a spell slot if you're concentrating on this. So, very useful to have. Sleed Storm can shut down enemies. I also want to bring up Plant Growth. This does not require concentration, and it creates quartered movement speed for enemies. So you can shut down enemies with this. I'm impartial to taking something like that with a Plant Growth, Sleed Storm, and Call Lightning. But, yeah, I think that that's what works best for this particular build. We'll go with that there. What we're focusing on is we got the heavy armor, but we can also get into melee zone with this war cleric and we get those extra attacks if we want to go with that. We also get the owl bear here and fungal infestation. So this gives us the ability to raise a mill dude molded across the zombie from a corpse. So even more zombies to go alongside our death cleric here. And we get another level three spell. So I'll go back with long strider again. Long Shred is kind of the one that I drop. It just it it has its usefulness, but some people don't really like it. So um, that's what we're gonna go with for level six Druid there. As we get into level seven, we get ourselves a level four spell slots. We also get ourselves Blight, which doesn't we always have this Necromancy spell, so it goes alongside the build very well. An eight D eight, so pretty nice. We also get Confusion, which is like the crowd control fireball. This affects a large area, and it can be great for shutting down enemies, so we're going to go with that. We also get the ability to conjure Woodland Being, which gives us two summons, and then we also get Summon Minor Elemental. So, this is where the build gets actually quite crazy. We're going to take the Conjure Woodland Being. This can also summon a Wood Woad, so you get two summons for the price of one. Conjure Minor Elemental is also really great, level four. 
We'll take that because all the extra ability or all the extra enemies that we can distract with our our creatures, the better. Because it's less likely we're gonna get hit with them. So I also really like Ice Storm, but there's only so much that you can take. We have Flaming Spear, which is a concentration, and these two don't require concentration, so you can take that off and take Ice Storm if you want. We do have to watch out for the amount of spell slots that we have, but the nice thing is there's a lot of potions that will restore them. So level eight druid gives us another feat. We can go ahead and take, um, we can take like Wallfire if you want to, but I don't overly recommend having that many spells held between there. So you can go with, there's a lot of concentrations. Unfortunately, that's the downside of Druid is there's lots of, <laughs> lots of spells that require concentration. But for our next level feat, this is where things can go a few different ways. Alert, I always love. Plus five to initiative. You can't, I can't overstate how important alert is. That is just a really great thing to have. Being able to go first means you can control how the battle will go, and you can shut down enemies pretty early on. But dual wielder is another really great option because this allows you to dual wield staffs. Staff of Cherished Necromancy alongside the Woe. Pretty powerful combination of dual staffs. So Woe and the Cherished Staff of Necromancy are Act 3. Very powerful to, to pair together. Um... It just depends what you think works best for your particular role in the party. I think that alert is really great to have because there's nothing better than going before your enemies. Especially if you have a whole team of high initiative. It allows you to intermingle, choose between your different uh, characters early on in the battle. And then you can swap between them, set up some unique synergies there. So at level 9 druid we get ourselves cloud kill which is another concentration but 48 uh, poison damage. And you can reposition the cloud every turn. Contagion poisons the target and also afflicts a disease of your choice. So it's nice just to get as well. And then we get some level 5 spells that are very useful. We're going to take Conjure Elemental because this just fits with the build of having a lot of summons to help us survive damage as a death cleric. And then I'm also a big fan of Insect Plague because this fits the theme of the death uh, cleric. And they, they do get a spell similar to this in actual Dungeons and Dragons. But... Uh, yeah, I think that this is nice just for setting up difficult terrain and dealing a bit of damage too with piercing damage, which if you have some later game synergy items that give you vulnerability on piercing damage, this can also further damage them. So there is a knife that you can get. I'm not going to name who. I don't want any spoilers, but there's a knife that you can get that'll set up weakness to uh, piercing damage, as well as there's some item armor items that will give you the vulnerability to piercing damage on foes. So that can be really nice alongside this. Planar Binding is also quite quite nice, but uh, we'll get into a further option. Planar Ally from the Cleric is nice too, but we don't get that unfortunately here. Improved Wild Strike doesn't mean a whole lot to us unfortunately, but we do get uh, Spreading Spores, which is nice, and then the Di Dilophosaurus, which is another wild shape form that we can take. We have no other option for uh, Scantrip, we're taking that. And then for our final spell that we can take here, um, Mass Cure Wounds is not bad, but Dominate Beast can be good to give you another uh, summon. Uh, every time the beast takes damage, it makes a Wisdom Saving Throw against your Domination. So not many things are great at Wisdom Saving Throws. We could take that, or we could go back to Long Strider there. But uh, last level here of our Druid, uh, this is still a Death Cleric, because we started with Cleric. Adding this in makes it feel like an actual Death Cleric, though. And our final spells, we do get a level 6 spell. Exciting. Um, Wall of Thorns is only obtainable by the Druid, which is kind of a cool one to take for a concentration that lasts 60 turns. Uh, create a wall of pliable, twisted thorns, surrounded by entangling vines. So this can entangle enemies. It's okay. Sunbeam is kind of nice, too. Um, this gives you, like, a Kamehameha-style attack that's... While the Death Cleric isn't always about ra Radiant Damage, we can go with something like that. Wind Wake can be pretty decent too. Uh, it turns your entire party into wind and you can't get hit. Heal is okay and Hero's Feast is underrated, but I wouldn't take it if you only get one level 6 spell. We're going to go with Sunbeam just for the amount of damage that we can output with this. And it blinds enemies, which goes alongside this build pretty well. So, yeah, we got a nice uh, spell save six, spell save DC of 16 and plus 8 to spell attack. So, proves our chance, especially if we had the 20 wisdom with the hag's hair. That gets pretty ridiculous. So, the Death Cleric. This is a pretty interesting build. What's nice about this is the amount of summons that you get. So, you can pop in your Woodwode here. 
And what's nice with the wood woad is it does get an extra summon. So whenever this pops in, you can also summon in the uh, fallen lover wood woad. <laughs> so you get a couple summons for the price of one, as I mentioned there. And then on top of that, we also got our create or animate undead, which is even more powerful since we're the spore druid. We get the Conjure Elemental, which you can upcast. I love the Water Mirror Dawn for setting up water and cold damage because there's a lot of synergy there. Um, you can also go with something like the Minor Elementals. The Ice Methods work really well with the Water Mirror Dawn. You get two of them, so we can cast those. It gives us two more creatures to play around with. And then on top of that, yeah, the Water Mirror Madon is really great. So what's nice about the Water Mirror Madon is it deals actually a lot of damage. And then it also has like... Heimdall Strike, uh, Explosive Icicle. So if you have water set up, that can be really powerful. So uh, we want to be in our, obviously, symbiotic entity form as much as possible. So this gives us the ability to become a true Death Cleric. And I think that this, like, the appearance that you get, like, this looks Death Cleric to me. I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a Death Cleric here. Even though they were doing a little silly dance... And this is like more of a spore build. It's still quite powerful. And then as a backup, you get one wild shape charge. Um, and then you get four fungal infestation charges to raise zombies from um, from dead corpses. So that can be also really nice. Give you a lot of zombies to spread aggro around. And then if you find that you're getting attacked, you can also switch into the dinosaur form. But I don't really recommend going this route early on. Um, you do lose symbiotic entity if you're going to your dinosaur form. But you do get that acid spit attack. And it gives you a little bit extra health. 74 health. And then once you take all that damage, then you can swap back into being the spore druid. So there is some usefulness to this. This is the Death Cleric. A little bit of a different build, but I thought this was quite interesting, so I want to share it with you all. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below. Really appreciate the support, and I'll see you all in the next video.